Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Atlanta. So glad you're here. Our first hymn this morning is, Oh, I Woke Up This Morn. Let's rise together in body or in spirit. Choirs bring it in all the parts. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom. Hallelujah.
Good morning and welcome. Good morning. I'm Dr. Tony Stringer, the lead liturgist for the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Atlanta. And this Sunday, as we continue our worship series on Afrofuturism, I am also the lead liturgist of the UU Congregation of Afro-Atlanta. <laughs> That's right. This morning, we were imagining the future. The Afro-future is now. In both places, now and in the future, we are transforming lives through courageous action, soulful connection, and radical cultural inclusion. Can I hear an ashe? You're welcome to this beloved congregation that we're building upon sacred land first cultivated by the Muscogee Creek people. Land that has seen the forced labor of enslaved peoples. Land that holds the blood, sweat, and tears of those who fought for and won their liberation. Land that has borne both tragedy and triumph. And land from which springs the dreams of better tomorrows. You're welcome here. Indeed, you are cherished here. Whatever land birthed your ancestors, Africa, the Americas, Europe, Asia, just to name a few, repeat after me the words, you are cherished here. You are cherished here. If you are straight and cisgender, or if you are LGBTQIA+, say it with me, you are cherished here. If you are straight and cisgender, or if you are, excuse me, I'm going to repeat that. It deserves repeating. If you are straight and cisgender, or if you are LGBTQIA+, say it with me, you are cherished here. All right. If you come seeking rest and respite, you are cherished here. If you come seeking action and engagement, you are cherished here. If you're looking to join with others in deepening our lives, in seeking meaning and inspiration, and in working collectively for justice, you are cherished here. It is traditional throughout the African diaspora to call upon the elders of the community to give their approval before proceeding with all ceremonies. So if you are an elder, by virtue of your age, your wisdom, even just your time spent in this community, I ask you now to give us your loud and enthusiastic permission by saying after me, you may proceed. You may proceed. Thank you, elders. <laughs> because we are a community that not only reveres its elders, but also its children, youth, young adults, and middle-agers, I will call upon those who are young in years or young in spirit, to also give their loud and enthusiastic permission by saying after me, you may proceed. You may proceed. Thank you, young and young in spirit. <laughs> now I welcome Latanya Beverly Simmons to the chancel to light our chalice. And as she does, let us say the chalice lighting words together. May, May the light, light of, of this flame illuminate our tradition of seeking, invite, invite all who yearn for acceptance, and ignite, and ignite our passion for justice and peace. Good morning. Are you ready for a story? Yes. Good. We Are Here by Tammy Charles, illustrated by Brian Collier. The journey of who we are stretches beyond rivers, roads, mountains, high-fiving blue skies. We were cool like that from the beginning of time. Can't you see? We are seeds, you and me, roots thick with dreams, stars, and possibilities. We turn numbers 
to seasons and patterns, track moons in outer space. From brick and grit, we built this place. Big hands, small hands, powerful in every way. We are joy, igniting the world like stars, caliente and bright, like trumpets at midnight. You hear that? Skit, scat, caddywhack? It's the music of our past. It's our rhythm and blues that you can't choose, just one. Our joy is the anthem of life heard on monument steps, opera stages, stadiums filled with thousands of faces. It's in the spice of our aisles, the soul of our food feeding, connecting us across miles. That joy, that wonder, a burst of sun rays laying the path for today and always. We are intercontinental, can't you see? With our strut and our style, trendsetters and go-getters. Swagger that sweeps across the globe. We are multi-dialectical, oh, so intellectual. One heart, uma alma, un espirit. Muchas lenguas. We speak the language of books and streets, feet stamping concrete. Countless steps that set the world on fire as we sing and chant for all to remember our names. We are fearless more than we know. When the world closed its doors and worry set in, there we were, putting on our capes, springing into action again. Why is that so? Because you and me, we have always been heroes. The same ones who sat to take a stand, the ones who ran so we could fly. It's no surprise, dear child, we are all of these things and so much more. No matter what they say, because someday when it's your turn to rule the world, people will be amazed and they will question the power of you. And when they do, you'll be sure to let them know you are brilliant, extraordinary, far, beyond ordinary, the very best of who we are. Thank you. Thank you so much, LaTanya. You're welcome to tell a story anytime. <laughs> and now I would like to invite Ellen Beatty and members of our Radical Welcome team up to the chancel this morning to lead us in our movement prayer. I'm going to have you stand here. Yes, wherever you would like to stand. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm talking to the choreographer back here. Like She knows best. <laughs> and please rise and body your spirit and join us. First... We bow to honor the spirit of life. We lift our arms and embrace the gifts of the spirit. We bring these gifts unto ourselves with gratitude and breathe and smile. We share these gifts with the world. We remember to be present. Honor. Embrace. Gratitude, share, be present. Amen. 
Amen. Blessed be. Thank you. <laughs> and so at this time, we invite our children, third grade and under, to exit and join preschool. Are there creative play for the morning? These locations are right, right down the hall uh, on the first floor. And now please take this time, two minutes, to <laughs> greet those neighbors nearest you with a warm welcome. <laughs>
images of God. Create no images of God. Accept the images that God has provided. They are everywhere, in everything. God is change. Seed to tree, tree to forest, rain to river, river to sea, grubs to bees, bees to swarm, from many, one, from one, many, forever uniting, growing, dissolving, forever changing. The universe is God's self-portrait. Ashe, blessed be. music for meditation. It's a song called I Need You to Survive by Hezekiah Walker. It goes like this. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of one body. Stand with me. Agree with me. our will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Try with me. I need Let us put hands on hearts. Feel the heartbeat, connection to life. Breathe in peace. Say to yourself silently, I will love myself. I will love others. And that love can heal the world. At this time, we hear the joys and sorrows of this congregation. Beth Gross, longtime member and elder of this congregation, is celebrating her 100th birthday today. <laughs> I believe Beth is watching the live stream this morning, so please join me in saying, Happy birthday, Beth. Happy birthday! <laughs> Beth, we love you. We wish you joy.
we hold in our hearts this morning those who are victims of violence, random violence, criminal violence, police violence, the violence of war and injustice. May we hear their cry. May we hear their plea. May we know their pain. And may we act for justice in their name. We hold in our hearts Senator John Fetterman and all who suffer from depression, anxiety, stress, loneliness, and other conditions of the mind and spirit. We send healing thoughts for their comfort, their recovery, their renewal, their reconnection. We hold President Jimmy Carter and his family in our hearts as he faces this final challenge of his life with characteristic humility, grace, and courage. Those who are watching the live stream are invited to write the names in the chat of people you are holding in your hearts this morning. Those of you assembled here are invited to say aloud the names of people you are holding in your hearts this morning. Speak them now. May all beings find connection. May all people find comfort. May all of us find ways to be more loving to one another. Spirit of life, love eternal, we rest in holy gratitude. We surrender to a mystery beyond ourselves, asking forgiveness for our mistakes, those times we've been selfish or thoughtless. Breathing in and out, we offer grace. We forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. We honor our earth, supporting and sustaining life. We breathe in, opening our hearts to wonder. For just one moment, feeling a deep connection with all beings. Let us calm our bodies and our minds. We breathe in peace, and then we exhale. We relax into this space that our intentions make sacred. We enter into the silence. I need you, you need me, we're all a part of one body, stand with me, agree with me, we're all a part of one body, it is our will that every need be supplied.
On this day in 1968, the first episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood aired on national television. <laughs> I have long said I was blessed to be a member of a very special generation, the Mr. Rogers generation. <laughs> I was also fortunate to be growing up in a very special community at the same time I was learning from that amazing and kind teacher who appeared on my television screen, and that community was UUCA. The lessons that I learned as a child from Fred Rogers were reflected back to me in my experiences in this congregation and vice versa. When Fred reminded us in times of stress, the best thing we can do for each other is to listen with our ears and our hearts and to be assured that our questions are just as important as our answers. I could not help but hear this verse from one of our UU hymns by Shelley Denham. We seek elusive answers to the questions of this life and in our search for peace, maybe we'll finally see even to question truly is an answer. Believing, being part of a beloved community asks us to listen with our ears and hearts, even when we are feeling uncertain about the path we are embarking on. It asks us to celebrate life, the strength of love, while finding joy in being together because we can hold each other up as we explore new ideas and continue to question. The concepts that were shared on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood frequently seemed familiar to me. They seemed familiar because they contained values that I not only heard on Sunday mornings at UCA, but that I saw my family and my spiritual community espouse every single day of the week. I felt I was surrounded by heroes then, and I do now as well. This is a community that sees we are responsible for each other and we have a duty to respond. That not only goes for the larger world around us, but it also means taking responsibility for each other in this beloved community. As we journey together now and in our future, let us recognize that we can support each other as we grow and change, rooted in our UU values, but open to the questions that will expand our vision of what is possible together. This morning's offering will now be given and gratefully received. I hear the drizzle of the rain, it's falling from my way. the corners of my mind I hope that I'll get to see you again la -di -da -di -da -di -da -di -da. my friend I hear the colors in the flowers the bitter 
I love a little Janelle Monet song on a Sunday morning for sure. <laughs> and now please join me in the dedication of the offering to the work of this congregation, which is weaving a tapestry of love and action we call community. We dedicate our lives and these are offerings. In 2006, Bob Brewer, Lynn Conley, Lainey Damon, and I drafted a report to the members of UUCA summarizing the results of a four-month appreciative inquiry study of our congregation. This report was the result of 20 study sessions involving 200 members of UUCA. Participants included what we used to call the Social Justice Council and the Religious Education Committee, as well as various social groups like ins and outs, the 20s and 30s and the 40s plus. In this report, which envisioned the future of UUCA, we wrote these words, which I'm going to both quote and paraphrase for brevity. Listen to see how much of this imagined future has come to pass. It is the year 2025. A visitor to the city asks, how do, you, how do I get to UUCA? This prompts as much laughter as the question, how do I get to Peachtree? <laughs> it seems that in 2025, UUCA has expanded from its current home in an office park on Cliff Valley Way to become a presence everywhere in Atlanta. There are now many UUCAs. UUCA is the Unitarian Universalist Cathedral of Atlanta. <laughs> the controversial name for a building recently completed that has won awards for both its architectural daring and its strict adherence to principles of green construction, sustainability, and accessibility. Not so far-fetched. <laughs> While there is ongoing debate as to whether the word cathedral is too closely tied to the Christian heritage, for a congregation with such theological diversity as ours. The building is so impressive that we've not been able to come up with another word to describe it. UCA is also the Unitarian Universalist Center for Activism, the coalition of dozens of human rights, civil rights, peace, environmentalists, interfaith, and other social justice organizations that now occupy our building. This includes our full-time community ministry team, training and classroom space, and a resource library for youth and adults interested and committed to social witness, social justice, interfaith work, and liberal activism. This UCA is the head and heart of social activism in Atlanta. It is where movements start and coalitions are built. It is where politicians come to connect with the ideas and people that are shaping the resurgence of liberalism in the South. UCA is additionally the Unitarian Universalist Clinics of Atlanta, a network of health screening, legal aid, and social service clinics that serve Atlanta's growing immigrant and socioeconomically diverse communities. This UCA is the place where we roll up our sleeves and serve Atlanta's neediest citizens. In serving these communities, we welcome without proselytizing, comfort without criticizing, and model our belief in the inherent worth and dignity of all human beings. UUCA is the Unitarian Universalist College of Atlanta, which offers lifelong learning, personal enrichment, and continuing education courses to laypersons and clergy. It also offers tutoring, college examination preparation, and English as a second language courses to youth and adults from socioeconomically challenging or immigrant backgrounds. Finally, UCA is the Unitarian Universalist Community of Atlanta, a multi-ethnic, economically mixed, intergenerational, intentional community that is redefining urban living in Atlanta. Built in partnership with the Mountain Retreat and Learning Centers, 
This UUCA is a model of sustainability, environmentally sound construction, green energy consumption, community-wide recycling, and accessibility. This UUCA is the place where we translate our religious values into a culture of everyday living. Now, each of those UUCAs are the wild-ass dreams. <laughs> yes, the wild-ass dreams of what this congregation would be in 2025, two years from now. Now, if there are gods of change, as this worship series suggests, then they're shaking their heads and telling us that we had better get busy. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Perhaps there are more UUCAs than we even dreamed of back in 2006. More UUCAs both needed and becoming. So look through those doors. Are we not also becoming the Unitarian Universalist Center for the Arts? Look beyond those doors. Do we need to be the Unitarian Universalist Center for Abortion and Reproductive Rights? Yeah. yeah. More UUCAs, both needed and becoming. Now, I revisit this report this morning because I think it will help you understand what Afrofuturism is. While well, Afrofuturism originates in a painful past and a dissatisfying present, ultimately it becomes an alternate vision of the future. A vision of the future that is untethered from what has come before and unconstrained by what is experienced now. More than anything, Afrofuturism is a wild-ass dream. <laughs> in this spirit, I want to add another UUCA that was not included in that 2006 Appreciative Inquiry report. This morning, I want to say that UUCA is also the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Afro-Atlanta. Will you give that an amen? Amen. Now, if you did not say amen, ask yourself why. And if you did say amen... Ask yourself whether it was hard or easy to do so. Now, let me be clear about this particular version of UUCA. I'm not proposing an alternative name for the Abundant Love Congregation. I wish the best for our sister congregation in the West End, but I'm not talking about Abundant Love. I'm also not talking about the Thurman Hamer Ellington or T-H-E, church, as it was known back in the day. T.H.E. was our sister congregation in Decatur. It tried hard, but it didn't thrive in Decatur, and ultimately T.H.E. Church shut its doors. But when T.H.E. Church was active, something painful happened here at UUCA. A black visitor to this congregation was greeted politely and respectfully, and out of what I can only assume was a misguided attempt to be helpful the black visitor was told that this was not the black UU church. The black UU church was in Decatur, and perhaps, perhaps they would like to visit there. What a way to welcome a visitor of any color to UUCA. Imagine this is your home because it is your home. Can you envision saying to a guest in your home, Perhaps, madam, perhaps, sir, you would prefer to visit my neighbor instead of me. Their house might be far more comfortable for you, and they are right next door. I hope it's difficult for you to imagine saying that to a guest in your home, and if it is, it should be equally hard to imagine saying that here. For this UCA is also your home. But would it still feel like home if this UCA really was the UU congregation of Afro-Atlanta? Ask yourself, would it feel like home? We're going to talk about a few uncomfortable things this morning, but that's okay. We're family. But I'm talking too much about the remote past. In a sermon about Afrofuturism, I should stay at least close to the present, if not consistently in the future. 
So let's talk about a few months ago. A black member of our church has given me permission to share this. I won't identify anyone, and the intent is not to shame anyone. I'm going to share, I'm going to shine some light on something we might prefer to not see. But in shining light, I'm not going to throw any shade. You don't throw shade. You don't lay shame on the people you love. And make no mistake, I love Unitarians. You shine light, but you do not throw shade on the people you love. So what happened a few months ago? A black member sitting in a discussion, as we do, expressed support for the eighth principle. Now, for those of you visiting who don't know what the eighth principle is, let me give a short primer. You use have had seven principles that provide a quick and broad summary of the core ideas that underlie our religious faith. Those seven principles are not a creed. We don't swear allegiance to them. But generally, they capture the key concepts that define who we are as a whole. Now we're considering adding an eighth principle that specifically commits us to anti-racism and anti-oppression. Some Unitarians think we don't need this, and some Unitarians do. The ones that think we don't believe we already have it. There are thoughts that are worth considering on both sides of this issue. And no one has to make up their mind right now. Right now, we're just talking. But sometimes, just talking can go horribly and unexpectedly wrong, especially when you're passionate. A person in the discussion I referred to who wasn't black had a different view on the eighth principle. In expressing this different view, they hearkened back to Martin Luther King's observation that Sunday morning is the most segregated time in America. And they admitted that one reason they come to church on Sunday morning is to be with people who look like them. They come, they admitted, not to be with people who think like them, not to be with people who like them, not even be to be with people that they like, but to be with people who look like them, a category that excluded black people without explicitly saying it, and perhaps without even meaning it. They were saying that black people don't belong here. If black people weren't here, what we need to even discuss adding an anti-racism eighth principle. Let me repeat. I'm not here to cast shade. I'm here to shine light. But we're all thinking, what a thing to say. What a thing to even imply in a congregation with a heritage and a history like ours. Isn't UUCA, this UUCA, the place where racism and oppression come to die? We are the church that disbanded rather than permit discrimination in membership. We're the church that first desegregated Sunday mornings in Atlanta. We're the church that locked arms with the parents of Ebenezer Baptist Congregation in defiance of the Ku Klux Klan. We are the church that cooked for Coretta Scott King in the wake of Martin's assassination. So what a thing to say in a place like this, even in the midst of a debate. But we're here to shine light, not to throw shade. We're here to love and not to shame. So the truth is, we're simultaneously on an individual and a collective journey to beloved community. Where we are on that journey collectively is not always where we are on the journey individually. And so we must love one another even more. While we're taking deserved pride in how far we have come collectively, while we are passionately embracing the vision of how far we will go collectively, while we are supporting and allying with those who are the target of microaggression, whether intended or otherwise, while we're doing all this, we can, we must 
still love those who straggle behind. When we fling open the door to beloved community, when we cross that sacred threshold, the door isn't going to slam behind us. It stays open for the straggler. It stays open for those who've fallen behind because we have faith that they will get there. If the Afro future became the Afro present, it could be uncomfortable for some of us. Some of us are not used to being in the minority. It can be a little lonely when not enough people look like you. I can relate. <laughs> I can relate to that. We must love the straggler who is lonely, for the beloved community is for them too. Make sure you don't ignore them. Don't shut the door. Talk to them. They've fallen behind because they're lonely. The straggler may be disoriented. When things change, it can be disorienting. It can be confusing. Suddenly, we have multi-gender bathrooms. Suddenly, there's an electronic membership database. There's a new building that looks nothing like our old building. It can be confusing. It can be disorienting. We must love the straggler who is confused. Don't leave them confused and disoriented. If you know the way, put a guiding hand on their shoulder. Don't shut the door. The straggler may think they are losing, losing power, losing influence, losing their voice, losing their control. Losing even democracy when democracy starts to look different. We must love the straggler who sees only loss. Let them see through your eyes. Hear through your ears so they can perceive what is to be gained from sharing power. Sharing influence. Foregoing control. Even doing democracy in different ways. Don't shut the door. Love the straggler because the straggler isn't just them over there on Facebook, on Twitter, or on YouTube. The straggler is me. The straggler is you. The stragglers are all of us. I promise you on some issue, on some subject, you will be the one who straggles behind the whole. We are each on an individual and a collective journey. Let the door be shut on none of us. The beloved community is for each of us. You may not be ready to cross that threshold. This community may have to let you lag behind on your own for a time so that the collective we can keep going. But the door to beloved community is never shut. It never closes on any of us. To that, I ask you, as you are willing and able, I ask you to rise in body or spirit and say yes. Rise and say yes to beloved community. Will your heart and soul Say yes. UUCA is the Black UU Church. It is also the Latinx UU Church. It is also the Asian UU Church. It is also the Indigenous UU Church. That is what universalism means. Will your spirit say yes? To be Unitarian Universalist is not to be colorblind, it is to be colorful. There is more that I require of thee. We can never be monochromatic, monolingual, monocultural, or monoboring. Will your heart and soul say yes? We can only be colorful, multilingual, polycultural, 
and diversely engaging. Will your heart and soul say yes? We only have to rise and say yes. Will your spirit still say yes? It may require more of us. There is more that I require of thee. It may require us to get used to everyone being in the minority because so many of us are so different. Will your heart and soul say yes? It may require us to remember the names of people who don't look like us. Will your spirit still say yes? It may require us to remember to speak to one another as we would to guests in our home, for we are one another's guest, and this is our home. If I told you what I really need. It may require us to speak to one another as if we were family. For we are building a community of deep relationship. Will your heart and soul say yes? We only have to rise and say yes.
Go in love. Go in peace. Keep saying yes. Yeah.